There is a relationship to be renewed and new relationships to be built. Canada is ready for this. Now, Justin Trudeau, he's ready for a commitment with the First Nations people relationship. He's going to be your boyfriend, guys. He's ready to take it to the next level. Oh, Justin, he's so dreamy, isn't he? What do you think, First Nations people? He's Canada's boyfriend. No, come on. But, but correct, we do need a meaningful relationship between Canada and the First Nations people. But hurting Canadian families from coast to coast to coast? I'm not forgetting about you people up north does nothing to advance the cause of reconciliation, which is really what we're most concerned about here. So why did you let it go on for so long then, Mr. Trudeau? Why did you let it go on for weeks and weeks and weeks? Why did you let these radical, anti-pipeline, you know, climate alarmist, uh, radical anarchist Marxists, whatever, neo-Marxists, post-modernists, whatever you want to call them, why did you capitulate to them? Why did you bend the knee to them? Why did you let them inflame this issue and let them perpetuate these roadblocks and support the First Nations people in doing something that you knew full well would hurt the cause of reconciliation? Why did you let it carry on for so long? Maybe you should have come out and said this right away. No, but you capitulated. No, you have to bend the knee for a couple of weeks first and let the situation really turn into a national emergency before you actually take action. Great job, Mr. Trudeau. This is Only Real Cloud. Thanks for watching. Please leave a like and a comment. I'll probably respond. Hit that subscribe button and the notification bell if you want to watch, because I don't know if the subscriptions mean a lot anymore on YouTube. But maybe they do. Try it out. What do we got today? from Maxime Bernier. This should have been the front page news everywhere, but almost nothing. Around 200 but so attend members attended meetings in BC on Wednesday to show their support for the controversial coastal gas link pipeline being built through their territory. The first speaker at the event in Houston was Russell Tiljo. I think I covered him earlier uh, a, couple, uh, a couple of episodes ago. A man in his 80s with 10 children. It's getting, yeah, man. <laughs> There's a, there's a real Chad right there, based Red Pill Chad, whose father was a hereditary chief in the Beaver Clan. Tiljo said he was attending the meeting organized by the Kitimat-based pro-LNG group, the North Matters, because he believes in employment. He said that in the past, the provincial government would issue permits and, and commence projects in the Wet'suwet'en territory without consulting chiefs. Back then, chiefs didn't want very much, just one cent on every dollar so our children didn't have to go sleep hungry at night. Back in those days, First Nations people didn't have much of a chance at getting a good job. We had to take jobs that nobody else wanted, Tiljo said, adding that the pipeline offers economic hope at a time when the lumber industry is struggling. Sometimes you don't see what the solution is until it comes. There's always a solution. That's what my father told me. And there's the pipeline protesters blocking commercial and Broadway in Vancouver. Look at them all. I'm sure they're all wet soaking people. <laughs> Tiljo's daughter, Marion Shepard, also spoke. She said that she was a member of the Unistotin Dark House, house one of 13 Wet'suwet'en, Wet'suwet'en houses that fall within five clans. The Unistotin are the center of the pipeline protest that are raging across the country. It is within their territory that the RCMP moved in two weeks ago to take down a barricade blocking coastal gas link crews from accessing a work site. The head chief on the Unistotin is Warner Williams. One of the wing chiefs is Freda Hudson who has become the face of the protest movement. Shepard said Williams and Hudson are not listening to clan members. It really makes me sad that our elders and our hereditaries cannot speak because, the, the, because only the select few are allowed, and I really don't believe in that, she said, adding that the members of the Big Frog clan had not been kept informed since 2015 when relations between hereditary chiefs and the Coastal Gas Link broke down. Coastal Gas Link is building this big thing. People are starting to speak the truth about what they feel, Shepard said. People want to work. The chiefs are supposed to talk to the clans, and the clans are supposed to make the decisions. It's not going that way. Robert Skin, a counselor for the Skin Tier band, tier, for the Skin Tier band, said the benefits agreement that his band had signed with Coastal Gas Link, Coastal Gas Link, would look after our children and our children's children. These protesters are getting on one side of the story. He said they want to stand up with their fists in the air. But I say, come and listen to us. Get the other side of the story before you go out there and stop traffic and stop the railroad. All you are doing is alienating our people who are trying to put a roof over their heads and food on the table. That's right. 
that they don't really care about First Nations issues and what the issues are actually facing people on the reserve country. And there's a lot of issues, and uh, a lot could be helped with the cash injection from this coastal gas link pipeline if it were managed correctly. And it looks like for the last five years, the bands and councils and the, the clans have been working with the company to make sure that it is working for them and it is giving them the right kind of benefits that they're looking for. And yet you have a small group that's just saying, no, we don't want this pipeline. And they're railroading it, literally, and they're overruling the democratic and the, the long and hard work the clans have put in to get this coastal gasoline pipeline built in a way that actually works for the majority of the people. But no, all the all the people in the city, all the non-indigenous folk, they just want to jump in and, oh yeah, capitalism's bad, yeah, something, okay, we're protesting, what is it? There's a great segment uh, from Rebel News where the reporter was asking a bunch of the protesters what was actually in the pipeline, and very few of them actually knew. They thought it was bitumen or crude oil. No, it's actually natural gas. They don't even know what they're protesting. And there's people, somebody commented on, on a video, they just commented today saying, hey, I support, I stand, you know, I support them. I support the Wet'suwet'en people. And it's like, do you support them? Who are, who do you mean when you say that? I think what, what they mean is you support the anti-pipeline protester camp within the Wet'suwet'en community rather than actually the Wet'suwet'en community, because the majority of the people there, they want the pipeline. So you're actually against them. You're not supporting them. If you're supporting these protesters, you are against the Wet'suwet'en people who do support the pipeline, who are the majority. So you are against the majority of the Wet'suwet'en people. Sorry to have to tell you this. And there was a point there where they were talking about the police uh, moving into the Unistoten land. Well, the police have been ordered out. They were ordered out. Exclusive RCMP officers feel sold out by order to leave LNG pipeline protest site. They feel they are being used as pawns and scapegoats, the senior RCMP officer told True North on the condition of anonymity. Two anonymous senior RCMP sources have told True North that the officers on the ground feel betrayed after they were ordered to abandon their guard at the LNG pipeline site. Well, which is it? Trudeau keeps saying that, wait, we can't order, the government isn't one who orders the police around, but they do have the ability to order them out of areas, to order them not to do certain things, but you can't order them to do. It's totally hypocritical, and I don't believe anything that Trudeau really has to say about it. And now he's saying, Trudeau's done an about turn, and now he's saying, we have to end these blockades. The barricades must come down now. The injunctions must be obeyed. The law must be upheld. But hurting Canadian families from coast to coast to coast, I'm not forgetting about you people up north, does nothing to advance the cause of reconciliation, which is really what we're most concerned about here. <laughs> he's the most disingenuous person I've ever seen. Ugh, he's terrible. Ugh, not fit for office, as far as I'm concerned, Justin Trudeau. Earlier today, I once again convened a meeting with the Incident Response Group to address the blockades. And here's the reality. Every attempt at dialogue has been made, but discussions have not been productive. We can't have dialogue when only one party is coming to the table. You can't have dialogue with people who don't want dialogue and are not willing to compromise an inch. They don't want the pipeline, and that's that. They don't want capitalism or democracy, for that matter, and that's that. They are absolute radical ideologues, and they aren't going to budge. There is no negotiating with them because they don't believe in Canada. They don't believe in the nation. They think it's terrible. They think it is some kind of horrific ethno-state or something to that effect. For this reason, we have no choice but to stop making the same overtures. Oh, really? Now it's time for you to stop making the same overtures. Great. We've all been saying it for weeks and weeks and weeks. We have to uphold the rule of law. What are you doing, Justin Trudeau? You're in Barbados. You're in, you know, on some beach having a, a, a mojito or something. You're growing out your beard. What are, are you trying to get your Security Council seat in the UN? Yeah. And when all you have to say is, oh, don't be racist, everyone. Please stop being so racist. These illegal protests are totally legitimate. These radical socialist anarchist Marxist types who are doing illegal blockades, black bloc tactics, and hurting Canadian families from coast to coast to coast. Oh, well, no, we got to negotiate with them because they're totally rational actors who are totally here to reason with. We have to reconcile. We have to reconcile with the radical anarchists. 
Of course, we will never close the door on dialogue, and our hand remains extended should someone want to reach for it. Yeah, you know who's reaching for it? The 200 Wet'suwet'en people who have been trying to support this project and come out and shown their faces in support of the project. The ma not that the 200 is the majority, but it's the majority of the Wet'suwet'en people who are in support of this pipeline. Maybe you should reach out to them because they've been reaching out to you and it doesn't sound like you've been talking to them at all. You're only interested in talking to the tiny minority of hereditary chiefs who are in league in, in with these radical socialist types. You have no interest in actually talking to the real representatives, the majority of the people who are there saying, hey, we're being threatened, we're being bullied, we're having our voices suppressed by these radical activists, and it's dividing our community. And this whole, um, this whole, the protests are dragging our name through the mud, and it's riling up tensions, and it's inflaming an internal political situation that we should be trying to negotiate amongst ourselves. It's an internal conflict, but no, now it's been blown up onto a national level with protests across the country, everyone jumping on, but nobody wants to go and talk to the actual elected chiefs, the actual representatives of the Wet'suwet'en people. How about you go and talk to them, Mr. Trudeau? In fact, Ministers Miller and Bennett just got off a call with the Wet'suwet'en hereditary chief just minutes ago. But the fact remains. The barricades must now come down. Pretty sure the fact remained that the barricades must now come down as soon as they went up because they were illegal in the first place, which is why the Supreme Court of BC made the injunction for the RCMP to go in there in the first place. Though that may be a controversial decision, the other ones certainly were illegal, where there's blockades blocking the bank or blocking the main street in Vancouver or blocking a rail track in some area or highways. That, those are all illegal, and they should have come down the day they went up, but whatever. I guess he's finally figured it out. Justin Trudeau has finally grown his spine. The injunctions must be obeyed, and the law must be upheld. Let me be clear. Our resolve to pursue the reconciliation agenda with Indigenous peoples is as strong as ever. There are historic wrongs to right. There are gaps to be closed. This is true. He is absolutely correct on this, and I understand why he's playing this whole situation this way. He can't just uh, railroad reconciliation. He can't throw First Nations people under the bus. Oh, because he, you know, maybe he's not understanding this. And this is the problem, is that he's capitulating to these radical leftists as well as to First Nations people. And maybe he should be capitulating to the First Nations people, but certainly not to the radical leftists, who are all very privileged for the most part. You know, upper-class, well-educated city people with trust funds and getting paid salaries from NGOs and whatnot, with their university degrees and their intersectional gender studies and whatever it is, their critical race theory. These are the people that we shouldn't be giving so much credit because they're taking illegal action. They should be arrested. However, we should be negotiating with the First Nations people because that is true. There is actually a dark and long history of civil rights abuses from the Canadian government against the Indigenous people. And so that is a legitimately sensitive issue. So I, I agree with him. We do need to reconcile. I think that we need to reconcile by abolishing the apartheid laws called the Indian Act in Canada and restoring property rights, individual property rights, to First Nations people on the reserve land so that they're not held as wards of the state in perpetuity. That would actually go a long way to reconcile. Yeah, that would mean that the, there would be some court cases, there would be some title and some treaties and land disputes to be settled. And that's good. We should do that. We should abolish the Indian Act and we should settle the title. There is a relationship to be renewed and new relationships to be built. Canada is ready for this. Now, Justin Trudeau, he's ready for a commitment with the First Nations people relationship. He's going to be your boyfriend, guys. He's ready to take it to the next level. Oh, Justin, he's so dreamy, isn't he? What do you think, First Nations people? He's Canada's boyfriend. No, come on. But, but correct, we do need a meaningful relationship between Canada and the First Nations people. Canadians want this. But hurting Canadian families from coast to coast to coast does nothing to advance the cause of reconciliation. So why did you let it go on for so long then, Mr. Trudeau? Why did you let it go on for weeks and weeks and weeks? Why did you let these radical, anti-pipeline, you know, climate alarmist, uh, radical anarchist, Marxist, whatever, neo-Marxist, post-modernists, whatever you want to call them, 
Why did you capitulate to them? Why did you bend the knee to them? Why did you let them inflame this issue and let them perpetuate these roadblocks and support the First Nations people in doing something that you know, that you knew full well would hurt the cause of reconciliation? Why did you let it carry on for so long if you knew it would hurt reconciliation so much? Maybe you should have taken a swifter action. Maybe you should have come out and said this right away. No, but you capitulated. No, you have to bend the knee for a couple of weeks first and let the situation really turn into a national emergency before you actually take action. Great job, Mr. Trudeau.